Alessia, Ukrainka was described by a famous Ukrainian writer Ivan Franko as the only man in Ukrainian letters, which is a dubious compliment uh, paid to a woman who was invested in the feminist struggle and in the idea of women's uh, empowerment. During the Soviet times, Lesya Ukrinka was recognized as one of the major Ukrainian authors, but her magnitude had to be belittled and it was done in a number of ways. So first of all, the emphasis was on her suffering. There is a theme of illness in the life of Lesya Ukrainka, she suffered from tuberculosis of the bones from her early childhood. She also insisted on the fact that her spirit was stronger than her body and her willpower could transcend the physical suffering. We can find this motif in her literary works. For example, Eurydice Mavka of the Forest Song. At the first sight, it is a new romantic drama, it is a plot about the force of nature, this uh, fairy creature, Mavka, uh, who comes into contact with human civilization in the form of Lukash, a peasant boy. And in the end, it is Mavka Yuridice who rescues both herself and her lover and acquires a voice. And this is what Lesya Ukrinka does for her mythical heroine. She gives her an agency and the subjectivity. It is very important for a woman who enters this literary stage, which is male-dominated, to steal the language. And she does so by uh, introducing a number of key characters of engaging with female experience, something that other modernist women writers were trying to do a few decades after Lesya Ukrinka has undertaken this task. This idea of giving women agency is also very prominent in the Stonehost. Stonehost is the first version of the legend of Don Juan written by a woman in European literature. In this story by Lesya Ukrainka, Don Juan is uh, not a romantic figure, but someone who is defeated by women twice. And there is particularly one woman that is very interesting, Donna Anna, she is the new woman. She is a turn of the century uh, femme fatale. Don Juan, the lover, wants to free her. Uh, he kills her husband. And uh, this is the reply that he gets. Anna, then tell me why we ought to run away now. What's the point? When you seduced young girls and stole away wives from their husbands, then it was not strange that it turned out you ran away with them. And he who is banished is a fugitive, of course. But why is one to send oneself to banishment? For what cause? Just to take a widow who is dependent upon no one? Think for yourself, is it not farcical? And what would I be to you if I fled with you into the world now? Certainly only a toy for a short while. Oh, Anna, there is no one that I loved as I love you. To me, you seem to be a holy shrine. Why are you laboring then senselessly to pull the shrine down from the pedestal? Because I want to have it here, alive, not just of stone. The stone is necessary if one wants to build on firm foundations one's life and happiness. Here we have a woman who does not participate in this patriarchal game of being a helpless victim who has to be rescued by this uh, romantic hero. She is interested in her independence and she talks back at power. She seizes the language um, and she shows her own perspective. Uh, this is what Lesya Ukrainka does again with uh, one of her dramas, Cassandra. Uh, this is probably one of the most important Western myths. Uh, this is the story of the Trojan War, which is told from the point of view of a seemingly minor character, the tragic prophetess Cassandra. Uh, she bears witness to the suffering, she bears witness to the bloodshed, and she gives us the point of view of the marginalized, of the oppressed, and of the slaughtered who do not get a, a hearing in the classical retelling of this story. So Cassandra tells to her brother, 
брата, не знаєш ти ціни жіночим жертвам. А я тобі кажу, з усіх жінок славутня Іфігенія зложила ще не найбільшу і не найтяжчу жертву. Ох, скільки тяжких, хоч би славних жертв, зложили ті жінки, що не лишили імення по собі. Якби схотів ти від мене жертви крові, певне б я її здолала дати. Але сеї не можу брати, я не героїня. Леся Українка gives the name to the nameless heroines of the classical myths, of the classical stories of the Western tradition. She not only engages the Ukrainian culture in this dialogue that has been going on for centuries, she also provides something revolutionary. She provides a female perspective and a female point of view. We can think of Margaret Atwood, Sylvia Plath, who also engaged with the male-dominated tradition of myth-making and provided uh, their own perspective and introduced female heroines who have been silenced. Lesia Ukrinka is perceived as a writer of one um, romantic story based on folklore motifs. And if we dig deeper, we discover a wealth of uh, ideas that need to be discussed, that need to be explored. One thing that is not currently recognized about Lesia Ukrinka is her connection to the European culture. And if anything, it is the Europeans who need to discover Lesia Ukrinka and to actually read her and maybe discover new things about their own literary traditions.